So let's stand through our Bibles just for a minute. Say with me, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's changing your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's changing your life. He is doing that. Hallelujah. So let me just run through some scriptures today. I just, uh, uh, we think of so many things. Isaiah 7, 14, a prophetic word. Prophetic, it was predicted that the Savior would be born. And shall bear a son and call his name Emmanuel, which is key, God with us. The word was manifested in the flesh. And he's still with us. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so many times, I think we can feel lonely. You could feel abandoned. You could feel like nobody cares. And yet, as a Christian, as a believer, it's Christ in us. You have one right with you there all the time. And you may not feel glory or whatever, but there's something about acknowledging his presence. And that's simply just saying, Jesus, thank you for being with me. And you start, you start speaking things that are biblical, and you know what? All of a sudden you feel his presence. His presence becomes manifested to us, all right? And, and he, is, he is with you all the time. Now we go into the, another verse in Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 6, of course, a very common verse. But also, again, prophecy for Jesus, the government, his government. This, is, this isn't natural government, spiritual government upon his shoulder. And his name, you think about his name, unwrap his names, how wonderful he is. All these things are good. Amen. You don't see in here, you don't see his name shall be called judge. Amen. You don't see that. All right. You see in here, wonderful. You see in here, counselor. Now, obviously, if, if you wanted counsel, you'd have to show up to be with the counselor, right? Yeah. So if you want counsel, it would probably be wise to show up with your Bible to the counselor. Amen. Now, there are natural counselors, which are, which are very, very good. However, the spiritual counsel is about the best thing you can have, that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would counsel us. And these are all good things. He's wonderful. He's counselor. Just... just if you get a gift, if you get a gift, the, the giver wants to see that the gift is appreciated and used. So if you give a gift for a birthday or Christmas, if, you're, if your son or daughter or grandchild or spouse opens it up and they go, yeah, okay, fine, you know, and throws it off the side. Well, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes you feel like it wasn't worth it or it wasn't useful or you don't appreciate it. When you unwrap the names of Jesus, you have to show appreciation. You unwrap it and you realize, wow, you're wonderful. A lot of Christians, they're, they're, just, they're going through the motions. They've given their, they prayed a sinner's prayer or a life prayer. They're giving their heart to the Lord, but now they're just going through the motions, plugging through life. And wonderful is still kind of on the shelf. And counselor is in the corner. And the fact that he's the miracle worker, the mighty God, somehow not connected. The everlasting father is that he will always be your father. He's never, he's, God has never abandoned anybody, ever. He does not abandon people. He loves everybody. Amen. Amazing. Amen. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. We're going to talk a lot more about peace today, but the prince of peace. And so where Jesus goes and where he resides, there should be an abundance of peace because of who he is. You know, as Christians of all people, we should be calm. Amen. When you think of life, we shouldn't be worked up, we shouldn't be anxious, we shouldn't be excited, all this and that. We should be calm people. I think Jesus was very calm. He was calm in the storm. You can't speak peace to the storm unless you have peace in the storm. So he was calm. He, he had, he was, the, the, the presence of God was with him, of course, and so... Let's look at the book of Luke a second. Book of Luke chapter 2. 
course, here's again, the, the word is being, the prophetic word, many years later, hundreds of years later, said, don't be afraid, I bring you good tidings. Now, I always like this, it's good news. Say good news. It's good news that produces great joy, and it's for all people. Now, the good news is Jesus saves. Hallelujah. Or we can say Jesus forgives. Thank you, Lord. Or Jesus heals. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, all the things that Jesus does. The good news is the devil is defeated. He's already a defeated foe. It's not someday to be defeated. He's already defeated. We win. We won at Calvary. He gave us the gift. So we're, he's already defeated. We already have been given this victory. So, so talk about good news. Heaven is sweet. And Jesus is coming back. This is all this good news that produces. Now, again, if you think about Christians, one thing you want to hold on to, peace, of course, you want to hold on to joy. In fact, it says it should be great joy for all people. So it's this good news produces great joy. It's for all people. A Savior is born, a Savior, and they call his name Jesus because he'll save their people, save their people from their sins, right? So, so this will be a sign unto you. You'll find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lied in a manger. Next verse is then, suddenly there was the angel, multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, glory to God in the highest on earth peace. Because, of course, now the Prince of Peace has come. Now, the Prince of Peace has come, and the Prince of Peace remains. So the Prince of Peace didn't leave. Jesus went to the Father, but he sent back the Holy Spirit. The Prince of Peace remains. Now notice this word here. It says goodwill toward all men. God's intention toward everybody is good. So what he's got aimed at everybody, what he's got aimed at you is good. His will is good. Goodwill toward men. Goodwill toward people. So, so Jesus came in the flesh to redeem us from our flesh and aim at us his good will, his intentions. Emmanuel, God's with us. Savior, we've got a Savior. We have a reason to smile. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to be excited for Jesus. Amen? So, here's Jesus. Good news, great joy to all people. Look at Romans for a second. Romans 14, it says, The kingdom of God... The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God, it doesn't say it's the gifts of the Spirit. It doesn't say it's all kinds of dramatic things. The kingdom of God, Jesus said, comes within us when he comes in us. So when you pray that life prayer, you give your life to the Lord, all of a sudden a new kingdom takes, takes place inside of us. Three Big areas, then, of the kingdom is righteousness. Of course, you have to have that right standing with God, right? But notice what the other two are. The other two are peace and joy. And it's not like people give, oh, man, this is so wonderful, the joy, the peace, the peace is so wonderful. People get excited about lots of other things. But I tell you, when you get excited about Jesus, think about how priceless it is to have joy have peace, to be in right standing with God. I think sometimes we're waiting for so much dramatic to happen that we miss the normal good things of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we can even think, well, I don't know if God's even using me. What, do you have righteousness, peace, and joy? That's the barometer. That's really the test of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God isn't signs, wonders, and miracles or all the other things, the kingdom of God are internal things inside of us. He wants you to enjoy the life he's given you. He hasn't given you hardship, true, but he wants you to enjoy this life. He wants to enjoy here now, right now, where you're here, because someday when we're gone from here, well, then our ministry's over. All right, no more witnessing, no more testimony, none, none of that. We're in heaven. But he wants you to enjoy your life right now. Amen. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I mean, years ago, we were doing a job when I was a contractor in Sioux Falls. And I was doing a job and expensive house and expensive doors. And I was refinishing these doors. And the lady came and she started talking, 
while I was doing this door, front doors, big double doors. And she said that she had hired me because in our ad said that we were Christian men, Christian painting company. I said, fine, so I'm working. And then I, as the process, the process of time, taking me time in these doors, I wit I'm witnessing to her. And I said to her, I said, you know, there's a lot of people that would give a lot of money just to have peace. Just to have peace. And this lady was very wealthy, very wealthy family, so forth, husband wealthy. And she's sitting on the steps uh, inside this house, and she looked at me and she said, I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people. I shared some scriptures with her and so forth. I wrapped up what I was doing the day. That day, I came back the next day. And I finished up the project, and she came down, sat on these steps again. She had this big Bible, decorative Bible, obviously for a showpiece. And she had it open, and she said, I found some verses you talked about. It's pretty amazing. I said, well, what you need is Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. And she said, well, I really can't. My husband's wealthy. We got all these things. Son's on drugs. So you look at the, if you look at the house, you think, oh, people drive by houses. They got it made. Oh, look at that. No, didn't have it made. The house was a mess, really. Talking about the home. You have a building, but the home, people in it. So she's, she's struggling with her marriage. Son's on drugs. Daughter's doing something else. So I just encourage her. Finish the job left. A month later, I get, a, I get a call. Hey, I got another room to do. And I said, you don't have another room to do. You just want to hear more about Jesus. Just talk to her on the phone. I said, I said he's your answer. I, I never found out if she surrendered to Jesus or not. But folks, peace is priceless. It's priceless to lay down in your bed and have peace with God. Because when you have peace with God, it causes a calmness to come over everything else. Doesn't mean you're not going to have circumstances. Doesn't mean you face, might not face adversity. Doesn't mean any of that. But you can have peace in the storms of life. Amen. You can have peace knowing that, oh, thank you, Jesus, you're with me. <clears throat> Turn to your neighbor and say, you do not have to worry. <laughs> you do not have to worry. The Christmas story, so much about the Christmas story deals with the peace of God. The Prince of Peace has come, and this peace is on the inside of you, and it all comes through a relationship. The relationship isn't with the church. The relationship is with Jesus. Amen. It's impossible to have real peace without the Prince of Peace. So we can have the world peace. I have a picture in my office, but uh, years ago I was at the United Nations and was in the assembly room of the United Nations and so on and so forth like that. But when the United Nations was formed after World War II and then built in New York City and so forth, and the, and the purpose was for world peace. But I've got a great, a great painting and so forth. Here's the building of the United Nations, and Jesus is standing outside knocking, you know, in the tall tower, because they left out the Prince of Peace. You can't have peace, real peace, without the Prince of Peace. It's the only way you can have that. Look at Romans chapter 5 for a second. Romans chapter 5 says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. Now, that peace could mean tranquility, harmony, security, safety. It also means prosperity. You can, your relationship with Jesus, God wants your relationship with Jesus to prosper. That means to flourish. That means, that means you're excited every day about Jesus. Not about what you're going to get from him. You're excited about the relationship. Amen. If you're married, you should be excited about your spouse. Amen. Not, it doesn't matter how many years you've been married. You should still be excited about your spouse if you're married. Right? It's a relationship. And as much as you invest in that relationship is how much you're going to get out of that relationship. So if I, if I totally neglected my wife, been married 42, 47 years, get that right, 47 years, <laughs> If I neglected that, then, then there'd be struggles, right? There'd be struggles in our home. Now, you can be a Christian and have struggles. So God wants peace with God. He wants our relationship with him to flourish. Flourish, abundance of peace. Why? Because he's a big God. He gives a lot of it. So as much as I run to him is going to be my level of prospering with him. 
We faced adversity with our daughter. We faced bankruptcy. We faced our own health issues, cancer reports, different things like that. But when we run to Jesus, in the midst of all, you can flourish in peace. Amen. You can flourish in that peace. But it's a relationship. Again, the counselor, if you don't show up for your counseling appointment, you're not going to get any benefit. If you don't show up to visit with the counselor, the counselor, Jesus Christ, no benefit. If I don't show up to tap into the Prince of Peace, then my level of peace is going to be pretty limited. For most people, they base their peace on outward circumstances. But this is an inward thing. The kingdom of God in us, righteousness, peace, and joy. The relationship with God is an inward thing. The peace is on the inside. So if I base my peace on what I see in the natural, what's going to happen? It's going to evaporate. That's what you see even in the world today. You see a lot of Christians that are frazzled and angry and upset and no peace. Why? Because they're looking at the natural rather than the supernatural. If I look at Jesus, then in the midst of this, I can still be a light, still shine. I can still witness, but have peace on the inside. Because the devil is a liar. The devil will say, look at this and look at that. And you don't have this and this isn't going right. And this prayer wasn't answered. All these things... But if I tap into Jesus, so many times he's just talking to me about me, how he loves me, how he cares about me. That's what he's going to talk to you about. You show up and he's going to say, thanks. I love you. He's always going to say things. He has goodwill toward all men, toward all people. It's goodwill. His plans are good. He's going to speak good into your life. And when he does that, he helps me because I like, I take my, uh, we all get distracted. Oh, like I'm looking at things. He said, no, no, don't look at that. Look at me. Amen. Like the storm and the disciples, they were all fearful and afraid. And, and of course, once Jesus calmed the storm, he says, why are you so fearful? In other words, take what he gives you and use it. You have to unwrap it. Amen. So peace is no good if it's still sitting there. Still sitting on the table or whatever. It's not, it's not any benefit to you. We can say, and everybody reads these scriptures, Isaiah 9, 6 and so forth, come Christmas. But it's of no benefit unless you unwrap it and personalize it and take it into your life. And then it becomes a benefit. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians 3 a second. So it says the Lord of peace. The Lord is Lord of peace. And himself He's going to give you, notice, his peace. I think, wow. I mean, we all have some peace, but his peace. Think, he is not shaken by anything. He is not disturbed by anything, irritated, whatever. He's, it's his peace. Notice, he's going to give you his peace, notice, at all times. Say all times. All times. Notice it says, in every situation. Say every situation. The Lord will be with you all. So he's giving you and me. He's the Lord of peace. Now, if he's giving it, I've got to receive it. Right? So God so loved the world. And yet how many people are following him in the world? Well, not proportionally, not many. But you have to receive what he's given. It's like if I offered you something, you would be kind to say, well, thank you. But... But also, I'm going to observe, like, are they going to open it? Are they going to like it? Are they going to appreciate it? Right? So we have to unwrap what he's given to us. So he gives you his peace at all times. Now, I can, I can be here right now in total peace, and at 2 o'clock, I might be frustrated. Hello? <laughs> so what do you got to do? You got to run back and get that peace again. <laughs> don't, don't give it up. I need a little bit more. <laughs> well, he's got it. He's the Lord of peace. He's not chintzy. He gives us abundance of peace. And so, so, because sometimes mentally we can say, okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah, I got it. But it's got to work every day of the week. That's the thing in, in Christians. It's got to work in our lives every day of the week. It isn't a church thing. It's a relationship thing. It's something on the inside of us that's in me. It's this righteousness, peace, and joy that, that someone else could think, People years ago looked at us and felt sorry for us. My family felt sorry for us. They all thought we were losers, you know, because <laughs> we were following Jesus and didn't have any money. 
Daughter was sick. But inside we had peace. We had something in here that maybe people can't always see, but they wonder, how, they, how do they keep going? We were at the doctor's office many years ago, and our daughter had like five specialists, and they, they sat down with us one day, conference thing, asked us how we were doing. We, our normal thing is, hey, we're doing, we're doing good, you know, and of course things weren't good in the natural. And, and uh, then this doctor said, he said to us, specialists, he said, you're the most amazing people we've met. He said, and all these physicians, they would talk and collaborate on different things. He said, you're the most amazing people we've met. I said, well, why is that? He said, because you're still together. You still smile. You still look like you're having fun. You're still in the midst of your daughter's situation. You're still, you know, positive. And I kind of nodded my head and I said, yeah. I said, you know, and then I had a gospel tract in my hand. I said, well, you know, it's, it's about Jesus. Yes, yeah, we know about Jesus. We've heard a lot about Jesus. Because they've gotten all these gospel tracts and stuff. And I said, well, that's what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. It's the only way. It's not because, it's not because we're strong. Well, it's because he's strong. There's really strength when you're standing in him. Isn't that right? It's like, it's like, remember the old story with the, the tornado? I went to think it was the Ohio or something, and, and uh, it tore down buildings and so forth. And there was this real strong building with the big pillars and so forth. It was just devastated. But not far away, in that path of wind was a pole, and around that pole was some ivy. And ivy, just a vine, a small vine, but growing around the pole... And people noticed that the ivy was green, and the ivy survived the storm, and that big building didn't. What was the difference? Well, the ivy drew its strength from this post that it was around. So even though it was weak, it drew its strength from what it was surrounded itself with. Amen. All right? Amen. If I surround myself, if I wrap myself around Jesus, let's put it that way, yeah. I will draw his strength. If I go it on my own, I don't have it. If I go it on my own, I'm going to lose my peace. I'm going to run out. But if I depend on Jesus, I'll always have enough. Wrap yourself around Jesus. The Lord of peace will give you his peace at all times in every situation. Well, what's your situation today? What do you face today or what do you face this week or whatever? You know, we're living... It says every situation. Well, we're living in troubled times. So every people, everybody faces difficulties. That's got to be clear. We do too. Everybody faces difficulties. Everybody has prayer needs. Everybody. All right? Nobody's got a perfect family. No one's got perfect kids. I always say, you know, it's pretty amazing that God creating, creating man, Adam, then Eve, and so forth, they had everything perfect, and they still went astray. So... You could say he was the perfect parent, still it didn't go the way he'd hoped. So, how do we hold on then in troubled times? How do we hold on to this peace? Wrapping yourselves around Jesus. Amen? Amen. Look at Romans. Let's go back to Romans, Romans 15 a minute. And it says, the source that God, who's the source of hope, another verse that says he's the God of hope, will completely fill you with joy and peace because you trust in him. Now, that's because you have to experience it. Trust is an experience thing. You're trusting your chair right now. How many of you turned over to look to see what was the status of that chair and how much weight and how was it built and so forth? You didn't examine it. You just came and sat down and you trusted it. The other day I was in a building and there was an elevator. And I thought how, how we, all, we just trust things. Door opens. You step in. Clunk. Door closes. Up you go or down you go, and you trust that it works, right? And usually in an elevator, there's a certificate. Most people don't look at, when was this last expect, inspected and so forth. And No, you don't. You, what, it's a trust level. It's an experience. You experience it, right? The same thing here. The God of hope, you have to experience joy and peace. You have to experience it. You have to do something. So when I don't feel that peace, and I don't feel joy, and so forth, but I know he is the Lord of peace, the Prince of peace, then I have to run to him. I have to do something to trust in him. Amen. Amen. 
talked about praise and thanksgiving and so forth. Well, that's into the presence of God again, right? So you enter his presence with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. So you're activating your faith. You're, you're doing something to experience to show that you believe, right? Joy and peace because you trust him. Then will you overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you're doing something to... Can we, do we have that in the Amplified Version by chance? Romans 15, 13, Amplified Classic, AMPC. Uh, if we do, we'll show that too. Thank you. So the peace, harmony from Christ, rules, acts as an umpire continually in your hearts. Uh, let's go back to Romans 15, verse 13, though. Let's go back to Romans 15, verse 13. See if we can get that one in there a second. If, if, do we have Amplified Classic, maybe? If we could put that in there. The peace of God is something that you have to believe. If you believe it, you're going to do it. So I step on an elevator because I believe that elevator. I trust, I trust that it's going to take me up or down or do what it's supposed to do. Brake in a car. You push your, push your foot on the brake because you believe it'll do what it's supposed to do. We do things all through our lives that are acts of faith, that are acts of trust, and we experience it, and we know it's real. Thank you. So the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith. So believing is action. So I have to do something. It's like, I don't have any peace. I don't know what to do. I don't have any peace. Okay, Lord, I just believe for peace, you know. But we have to do something. Exercise your faith. Exercise your faith in the word. Exercise your faith in praise. Exercise your faith in standing, believing, confession, declarations, and so forth. So that the power of the Holy Spirit may abound to be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Amen. Joy, peace, hope, the power of the Holy Spirit. All are things that he wants us to experience. Well, we're talking about peace here. Colossians 3, verse 15. So we'll go to that one then. Amplified classic. So the peace... From Christ will rule and act as an umpire in your hearts. So when the peace of God is there, have you ever been through a day and all of a sudden you realize, wow, the peace just, just left you? Because maybe because of a phone call, maybe because of some circumstances, and all of a sudden you feel troubled. The peace of God should umpire things. Okay, so when, I, when I'm faced with things, ugh, you know, umpire, you want to say, no, you reject, you reject what's not a faith. You reject what's causing turmoil. See, there's things in our life God wants to do. His plans are so good, and yet we are cooperating with him for those plans to be manifested. So the, when Christ rules in our heart, the, the peace rules in our heart. It acts as an umpire in your heart, deciding, settling, finality, all questions that arise in your minds, in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ, one body, you are called. So, so it umpires decisions, the thoughts, and so forth, rejecting things that will cause our peace to be stolen. Everybody's got a bad phone call. From, could be from a doctor, but it could be from a loved one. It could be from anybody. You get a bad phone call. Not fun. However... In the middle of that, you can have peace. Amen. I got a phone call years ago from the doctor's office after they'd done a biopsy, and they called from Sioux Falls, and they're very matter-of-fact. You know, this isn't chit-chatty. How's your day going? So on and so forth. Is this Dave Coffin? Dr. Dr. Your birthday? Yeah, this is Dave. This is Dave. Yeah, you've got cancer. We need to see you right away. Matter-of-fact, aggressive cancer, okay. We want to see you this day right away. Okay? So, in the natural, that'd want to suck the life out of anybody. But in the supernatural, it doesn't have to. I sat down on a chair. I said, thank you for calling. I appreciate it. I'll see you on that date. But I immediately was just like, thank you, Jesus. You know something? He already knows reports. It's not new to him. Sometimes you may hear a report say, oh, Lord, I got this report. Yeah, I knew about it last week. Nothing's new to God. Nothing ever 
takes God by surprise, ever. No, Jesus was like, oh boy, I never thought of that, you know, going around ministry. Never thought, no, nothing ever took him by surprise. He told the disciples, hey, let me just tell you, let me make it clear. Lazarus is not sleeping, he's dead. He's already been dead for a couple days, just so you know. <laughs> Didn't take him by surprise. When he came there and they're all weeping and mourning, it wasn't like, oh my goodness, he died. I didn't know that. No, he did know that. He told him ahead of time. Yes. Said he knew it for days that he was dead. So when we get information, it's new to us. It's not new to him. So I could sit down and say, well, thank you, Lord. You know all about this. My life is in your hands. My trust is in your hands. Amen. Peace of God. Still had the peace of God. Amen. In spite of the word. Remember, cancer is a word. It's not a sentence. It's a word. It's a word, not a sentence. It's a word. It's a name, but the name of Jesus is always above that name. Amen. See, so many of the scripture kicks in. No, that's, that name is here, but Jesus is here. Amen. It's a higher name. So the word of God, the peace of God then can umpire your hearts. So that we can walk in the... Victory, Amen. in spite of what we face. John 14, a few more verses here. John 14, verse 27. So Jesus says, notice he said, I'm going to leave you. Now, Emmanuel, he's still with us. You know, and of course the world, all, Emmanuel, God with us, Christ with us, oh yeah, yeah, and then act like he's, they're abandoned. No, he's with us. Acknowledge him, right? Acknowledge him. So, so you acknowledge the Lord. In all your ways, acknowledge him, the Bible says. Oh, this is Jesus. Oh, you're bigger. You're greater than all these things. And you're going to stand with him. You're acknowledging him. You're wrapped around him. So Jesus said, I'm going to leave you my peace. I'm going to leave it with you. Isn't that good news? Amen. You walk out of here today. You're going to bless, shake hands with several people and so forth. But you're, you can still have peace. If, let me just say this. If you don't have peace right now, close your eyes a second. If you don't have peace right now, just say, Jesus, I ask for your peace. Jesus, I ask for your peace. I ask you to settle my thoughts. I ask you to settle the storm. Jesus, I receive this. I, you're the Prince of Peace. I receive this peace. I receive you, Jesus. It's life. It's life. He's breathing life into us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, my peace I'm going to give to you. It's bequeathed. It's, it's yours. All right? Yours. You got it. Think about this. It's not a prayer line then. It's not like, I need you to pray for peace. No, he already gave it to you. Amen. If you already gave it to me, my part is just to receive it. Right? If you gave it to me, my part is to receive it. All right. So I'm not giving his peace like the world gives. So the world's peace is based on Natural things, natural circumstances, physical things, money, food, all kinds of things like that. How much money we got in the bank, how much food's in the pantry, whatever, all those things. Got a job or got all these things that help us feel good or help us feel valued. And yet Jesus said, my peace isn't based on any of that. It's based on a relationship, based on what's in here on the inside. Not as the world gets. Now we can read this in the natural, I'm just saying... Rehearse this, write it down, or underline it. It's not like the world. Jesus gives you, leaves you this peace. Not as the world gives. Now, what does he say? Don't let your heart be troubled. In other words, you're, it's umpiring. Don't allow yourself to be troubled by the world. So Christmas is a, is a wonderful time of year celebrating the first coming of Jesus Christ, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God is with us. And yet, many, let's just speak of the body of Christ, much of the body of Christ is troubled <laughs> or out of peace, not even living the message. And he says, don't allow your hearts to be troubled. Don't allow fear to come in. Where's the best place to stop fear? At the door. Remember when, when uh, Jesus was going to go to the man's house, the the leader's house, and he says, my daughter's sick, and so forth. And in the meantime, the woman cuts, comes and touches him. The crowd's there, and he says, who touches me? And, and this lady's healed. And then the guy comes to Jesus. Uh, the guy comes to the ruler and says, don't bother me along. Your daughter's dead. 
Your daughter's dead. What is the first thing Jesus said? What is the very first thing that Jesus said? Turn to the guy and says, don't be afraid. The very first thing, slam the door in fear. If I was going to stop a robber, the, de the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If I was going to stop a robber, I won't, wouldn't open the do door of my house, allow him in the house, and then chase him around my house. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out of here. <laughs> no, I would stop him at the door. Amen. Right? No. Amen. You're not coming in. Amen. You prevent him from coming in. Amen. Don't allow your heart to be troubled. Amen. Don't allow it to be afraid. He looked at that ruler and says, don't be afraid. And I'm sure the guy I contacted Jesus is like, let's go. Go to the house. Look it up. And everybody mocked Jesus. Because they said, she's not dead yet. She's just sleeping. Ah, get out. Clean the house out. Yeah. Brought in a couple of the disciples and raised her up. Amen. Don't allow your heart. And folks, I, practice, I have to practice daily. Okay? This isn't like, you know, that might come up sometime. I might have to apply that. No, how about daily? How about daily? So you're walking around in peace. You're living in peace with God, with others. Don't allow your heart to be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. Stop allowing that. I'm so upset. That really bothers me. Okay, stop it. <laughs> well, how are we going to do that? Just stop it. It's not like working your way out of it. Just say, okay, I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm going to stop magnifying that. You magnify what you talk about. If I talk about the Lord, I magnify the Lord. Amen. If I talk about my problem, I magnify my problem. Yeah. Right? So if I start talking about Jesus and not about the problem, all of a sudden the problem begins to diminish. You can fly over mountains that are 14,000 feet high, covered with snow, and they look like a tiny pimple down there because you're so high. When you're with Jesus, things become in perspective. It's not as big as you make it. Amen. So stop allowing yourselves to be agitated, disturbed. Don't permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Amen. I think, oh, thank you, Jesus. That's, that's just what I want to do. I don't want to permit that. Stop the thief at the door. Stop the fear at the door. So John 16, Jesus goes on from there. And of course, he, the, the area, John 16. I think we have that. Yeah. I told you these things. Now, the world is troubled. Jesus said, hey, the world's troubled. I already know about that. So it's not like we're informing him, Lord, the times are really tough. <laughs> God, I know that. Also, let's keep in perspective what our toughness or our tough times sometimes are first world problems right. and not third world problems. So we can say, oh, it's really tough, you know, but someone else, it's much different. Jesus said, I told you things so that in me you might have perfect peace. This perfect peace is prospering. Peace with God is prospering. Confidence. Now, in the world, Jesus already said that you'll have, you will have tribulations, trials, and success, and frustration. All right, that's the world, right? We, we sometimes spend our time praying like we've got to deal with all this and get this all out of here. Well, that's the world. The devil's here in the world. Okay, that will only be done when, when we go to heaven. And the devil's bound in the lake of fire. So I'm not going to change the world, so to speak. Not happening. Jesus said, in the world you will have these things. But he also said, I want you to be of good cheer. I want you to take courage. I want you to be confident. I want you to be undaunted. I have overcome the world. I've deprived it of its power to harm you. I've deprived it of the power for it to conquer you. He's conquered it. Amen. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. More than conquerors because he just gave me the thank you, Lord. I can live above this. Right. I can live above these circumstances. That's, see, folks, that's the good news for us. Amen? That's the good news for us today. That's part of the Christmas message. Prince of Peace. Emmanuel with us. Our Savior. On your side. Goodwill aimed at you and I. Let me close with one last verse. So just the Philippians 4. Let's just Philippians 4, this last thing. And we have to think about it, think right and so forth. But don't worry about anything. Don't worry, pray. 
Now, when we're praying, we're really making a lot of times declarations. Deb's talked about declarations. But a lot of times you're making declarations. My trust is in you. My hope is in you. My confidence is in you. I'm not going to look at that mountain or that problem and worry, all right? Don't worry about it. Pray about it. Notice, let your request be made known in supplication with thanksgiving. Remember, I always said you pray with thanksgiving. Your request is made known to God. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding because you don't see it in the natural maybe yet, but this peace comes and you think, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're taking care of it. Someone can say, well, there's still a problem over here. Well, there might be in the natural, but he's taking care of it. He's bigger than what you or I face. He's bigger than what we face. And so when we, we pray and we thank him and we worship him and so forth, the peace of God comes. It surpasses what I can think, but it keeps my heart, keeps my heart and my mind in the right place. Amen? Amen. Folks, this is for us. This is for us. This is a manifestation of the Christmas message. His plans for you and I are good. Anybody watching even on this camera right now, his plans are good. It can be anywhere in the world. His plans for you are good. Everybody faces adversity. Everybody faces adversity in the world. Some of you in other countries face it worse. I know that. And for you in a lot of those countries, we're praying for you and praying that you'll be safe. Praying that your needs will be met. Praying that you'll have food. Amen. Amen. Just remember, there's no country like the United States. You might not have something, the government will give it to you. <laughs> might not have food, oh, they'll give you food. Not, don't have a place to stay, they'll give you a place to stay. We live, we live in an amazing place, all right? May not all be paid for, but we live in an amazing place. In other worlds, in other places, they face so much adversity. Don't allow yourself to be caught up with the world. Position yourself to be caught up with Jesus. To be seated in heavenly places. To exalt him. In fact, let's close our eyes for a second. Just, just lift a hand a second. Let's just exalt him, you know. Your eyes are on him. And there's something about if you put your eyes on him, it's, he, he loves that. He loves that because then you're, you're putting your eyes in the right place. In all your ways, acknowledge him. So, Lord, we acknowledge you right today with problems or circumstances that we face. You in your life. Make it personal. In your own heart. You're talking to the Lord right now. What do you face right now? Lord, we acknowledge you. These, this is where we're at. We acknowledge you, but we thank you, Lord, for your peace. I pray peace to come. I pray that you would experience it as you trust him, even now, peace to come. Peace that you might think, ah, I don't even know why I feel this way, but I feel better. <laughs> peace will come. You don't have to understand it. But Lord, we put all these things in your hands. You are the great I am. Jesus, you came because you loved us so much. So I just speak life to each person here today. Speak life to each family. Speak life to those listening online right now. Speak life, your life, Jesus. Abundance of peace, abundance of joy, abundance of hope because of who you are. We wrap yourself, ourselves around you, Jesus, and we thank you. We thank you. You are our strength. You are our shield. You're our defense. You're the great I am. You live in us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that we are more than conquerors. Nothing is impossible, Lord. We just believe for miracles, miracles, miracles. I pray for miracles in homes here, miracles in families or relationships or children, miracles, miracles in people's jobs, miracles of provision. Lord, I thank you. You're the great I am. You're the miracle healer. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know that something's wrong with us before we do. Lord, we thank you. You're the miracle healer. And we thank you today, Jesus, for the supernatural supernatural, the supernatural flowing through us, through our lives, Lord God, as we tap into you. We thank you for the supernatural, Lord. I just speak life over each person listening right now, here, online, or in the future, each person listening. Speak life into your life in the name of Jesus. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Turn your face to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> He will bless you. He will help you. He will be a counselor. He will be your strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even in this season where we celebrate your first company, coming, we thank you, Lord, for manifestations, Lord. And Father, for everybody here, their level of peace will greatly increase. Greatly increase in Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen.